Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're about to do in our lives. Your truth is marching on. The gates of hell shall never prevail against it. Lord, let your word speak to our hearts and cause us to understand fully your thoughts. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? He loves you. He's made all these provisions for you. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, I was sharing with you, we're still talking about the opening of the book. Now, this week, the Lord just laid it in my heart to explain thoroughly this. Um, now, when we say tithing, people just look at the word tithing. And that's, that's how people got angry with it. Because, see, a lot of people just felt, oh, the some pastors are using this to exploit people. And because they are using this to exploit people, I know those things are true, but then is it true with everything? Preach righteousness, Satan will come in and twist it. Preach holiness, Satan will come in and twist it. There are there are people, there are churches that you preach holiness, but then there are people in that same church that have used that message of holiness to oppress other people. You are not holy like me. But when we know that is the grace of God. Now, the fact that we know is the grace of God doesn't mean we live our lives carelessly. If the grace of God is working in your life, you will see that your life is producing holiness, but then it is not by your own struggle. You see? Now, that's how this thing goes. So whatever God brings, Satan will corrupt it. So now you don't say because of the corruption, everybody should stop doing it. Be careful with those kind of thoughts. Be careful with those kind of thoughts. You might just be dabbling into the trap of the enemy. The reason he comes to corrupt it is so that the operation, the real operation of that thing will stop. So now God instituted tithing, but Satan comes to corrupt it. Why did he come to corrupt it? So that we will all get angry and leave it. If this is what it means, then let's all forget about it. In forgetting about it, we begin to sin against the Lord. Now, that's why I told you a few days ago, those who have preached to you and tell you, Titan is not important. Titan is of the Old Testament. I'm sorry to tell you, if you have followed them, repent. You can reach out to them and say, ah, pastor, papa, whatever you call them, please re-examine this thing. Because I don't want to be found being led into the trap of the enemy or being led by the spirit of the Antichrist. Yes. I've always put up a challenge and I mean this and I'm saying it again today. There is no one and I challenge every preacher no one can tell me. You can ask them also that the Holy Spirit specifically told them in a revelation that Titan is wrong. I put up that challenge. <laughs> Praise God. No one. I know he will never say such a thing. I know him that much. He will not, because he will not speak against his himself. He will not speak against his truth. Now, I've received clear revelations from the Lord. Now, why am I bold about this? I'm not bold because I am saying it so that I'll get, I'm not even saying bring the money. I wish I could say bring the money to me, praise God. But, but you see, I've received revelation from the Lord consigning this. And John said it. He that is from above speaketh the things that he has heard 
and seen. That's what he speaks. The Holy Spirit came from above and when he talks to you, he's talking to you based on what is up there. Now, when we believe him, we have accepted his testimony. I can never lie against him. I can never say, oh, he taught me something, but then it's not as it is. Ah, brothers and sisters, it's as it is. Every believer ought to tight. If you are not tightening, you are working against God. Because tithing is one of the tools that God set in place right from the beginning. And the intention of God is that through it, he will bless all the families of the earth. And then we must not make the mistake of thinking Christianity confined to the church, local church, now that building or that group. You'll be making a big mistake when you think that way. If you begin to interpret everything through that light, you'll be making a mistake. So in Malachi, we say, bring it all the tithe into the storehouse so that there will be meat in my house. They think he is talking to, about bringing it to the local church so that the church will have money. So people begin to interpret this and say that um, um, it's because people bring tithe. That's what the church used to do their structure, do their administration and do all those, those kind of things. So every people should be bringing tithe to their... Now, first of all, you're encouraging people to tithe, which is good. But then everybody, where you start off from, you are supposed to grow deeper in God. The more you grow deeper in God, the more your relationship with Him begin to transcend, transcend the church environment. Oh, that's true. That's true. You begin to realize that every principle of God is something that you should live wherever you find yourself. Same thing with Titan. So wherever you find yourself, God can instruct you. Now you realize that it was beyond the church that God was speaking. So he wasn't looking. So when God says, so that there will be meat in my house, he's talking about his own storehouse where he can bless all the families of the earth from, not just the church members. Now this is the reason you find some people, you know, being bold to say, I've been paying my tithe in this church. Things are not working. Pastor, please, I want a refund of all my all the tithes that I have been paying because they were not tied into the Lord. They weren't. They were tied into the church. So to them, they are giving tax to the church. And sometimes I know some churches, they teach it that way, that uh, if you're not a tither here, when you're in trouble, we will not help you. You see that? So they have tithe cards where they keep a record of people who, and then, there are, there are church organizations that say, if you don't tie, you can't marry here. You can't do child. If you want to go and get married, oh, I've seen a wife. I want to marry. Okay, let's check his tight record. Brother, you have not been paying tight here because your tight record is empty. So um, you cannot get married in this place. Now, all those things started from a good place of reasoning. Oh, let's, let's find a way to get our people to be committed to tithing. But you see, where it now gets wrong is where, for example, oh, they say, brother, you're not paying. I say, no, I've been paying my tithe. Say, but your tithe record. Yeah, because um, um, God just instructed me once to give it here. So what do you do with your tithe? Oh, God always tells me what to do. Even last week, I, I paid tithe. God told me what to do. And he told me to send it to Susan. So, eh, no, no. They begin to argue with you. See, they don't appreciate that, hey, how do you hear God tell you? you? Say, oh, this is what happens. This is how I pray. And God speaks. And when, now, when I take it, this is a manifestation I see. Not manifestation of blessing, no. That, now, a witness is born in the heart of the one that received it. Now, people don't quite appreciate that. But that's the truth. That's the truth. Remember, remember the promise of God. And that's what I'm stressing all week. The promise of God is all the families of the earth. He, God, will take care of them. How is he going to take care of them? 
not by raining down money from heaven to them. He can't do that. But he chose because he said, through the seed of Abraham. Now, what does that tell you? It means when the blessing comes to the families of the earth, they will connect it with the seed of Abraham. What did, what did John say? He that God sends, speak God's words, right? Anyone God sent, he brings the word of the Lord. So now you are praying and God said, take that tithe or take that portion, this portion of that tithe to so so and so person. And then you go there and say, hey, the Lord sent me to you. What did the Lord say you should do for me? He said, I should give you this money. Wow. You mean God told you my name? Yeah, he did. And then you hear things like, do you know, for two days I've been asking the Lord for this exact thing. Oh, he has answered you. So he sent me to you. Are you sure you didn't hear me? Sorry, where last did we see? <laughs> God. He, he sent me to you. This can happen to an unbeliever. Yes, God can command you to give your tithe to an unbeliever. I'm not saying do an emotional thing, mini, mini, man. No, wait on him. And then you, you give him, say, sorry, I don't get it. Did you say God said you should give me? Yes, God said I should give you. No, don't joke with me. I'm serious. No, don't joke with me because this thing is very, very important. I'm serious. God said I should give you to you. He called my name. Yes, he did. Now, what are you telling that fellow? You have brought the blessing of God to him as a witness. Then you've opened the door for the gospel message to come to him. Now you can say God speaks. He spoke to me about you. Did you tell me you had this need? No. But God knows. You prayed to him, right? Yes, I did. In fact, I just said a very short prayer. He heard. That means God hears you. How about you giving your whole life to him now? So he can begin to use you because that's what we do. As we bless, we recruit others also that they too may become a blessing to others. As we bless, they become a blessing. We bring them also opportunity to preach the gospel to everyone that we meet. I'll read something to you, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Chapter 26. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Let me read something. Verse 12. There's something I want to pull out from this scripture, but I want to show you that it's connected to Titan. It says, when you have finished laying aside all the tithes of your increase in the third year. Remember I told you yesterday about the third year of Titan. The year of Titan. And have given it to the Levite, the strangers, the fatherless and the widows so that they may eat within your gate and be filled. Then you shall say before the Lord your God. He's telling you what prayer you should pray after you have obeyed God, right? I have removed the holy tithe from my house and also have given them to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widows according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed your commandments, nor have I forgotten them. I have not eaten any of it when in morning, nor have I removed any of it for an unclean use, nor given any of it for the dead. I have obeyed the voice. Hear that? I have obeyed the voice of the Lord my God and have done according to all that you have commanded me. Now look at this part. This is what we're going to. Having done this, he said you must pray this prayer. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people. I could Now, why is he telling him to telling them to pray this prayer? Moses was instructing them now. I have just done the righteous thing in fulfillment of what God said about the blessing of the seed of Abraham, through which the blessing of God will come to all the families of the earth. Now I have just done to one. And then I go back home. After hearing the rejoicing and the testimony, I go back home and say, Father, I have done your command. I have obeyed you. I have become your outstretched hand to that family, to that fellow, to that community, to that church, to that man of God. So, Father, 
look down from your holy habitation and bless your people. Now, we are already in the process of extending our hands to bless God's people, right? So now, having done that, you're saying, Lord, we are faithful. Can you release more? This is how you will increase. This is how you will prosper more and more and more. Two reasons. You have opened your heart to connect with the voice of God. That's number one. Number two, which is very important because a man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's one. Then number two, you have become the physical manifestation of the blessing of God to the lives of men. Not just a church community. Not, oh, we in this place, this is how. No, 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 no. You are reaching out to men. You might be the chief of ex chief executive of your organization and you received your money and you pray consigning it. And, and God knows how to do these things. You don't have to preempt. You don't have to overthink it. It's simple, Father. Thank you for this week's blessing. Thank you for today's blessing. Thank you for this month's blessing. As often as God blesses you. You remember Moses said, you shall remember the Lord your God for he is the one that gives you the power to get wealth. That's exactly what you're doing. How do you remember him? Remember to tithe. Father, I've received your blessing, Lord. And here's your portion. I wait for further instruction where it should be sent to. And then the word of the Lord comes to you. Go to so -so and so place and do so -so and so thing for them. Okay, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anything he commands you to do, do it. You might start out, maybe your tight, maybe your tight is maybe, maybe 2,000 there. And then you bless the Lord, Lord says, give it to so and so person. Next door neighbor. My Lord, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. You go know, hey. I was praying and God said, I should come and give you this. I don't know why, but he says, hey, do you know? Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. This shows that God truly loves you. Hey. Oh, yes, he loves you. What do you think about it? Don't you think it's time to get serious with you? You're not bribing them. You, you, you see, you're not the one coming to preach now. You have already preached. You are just explaining the preaching that you've done to them. It will leave a great impression in their hearts. God will use that to save sinners. Because someone who's telling himself, ah, I'm going to do evil this night. I'm going to go robbing this night. Why? Because I need 40,000 there. And then just before he goes out, someone calls him on the phone. Hey, how no? How is everything? I'm good. Are you home? Yeah, I'm home. Um, I would have come to see you, but hi, it's late. You know what? Send me your account number. My account number? Yeah. Why? Just send it. Just send it. Send it. Then he receives another. Sorry, what's this for? I was praying and God said I should send it to you. And the 40,000 naira that he's looking for. Do you think that fellow will still wake up and go join that robbery squad to go rob that night? Oh. He's already agreed with them that he's coming. He said, uh, they, uh, sorry, uh, something just came up. Please, I, I can't make it. Something important just came up now. And then he's shocked. He's there. He doesn't know what to do. You've created opportunity. Do you know the Holy Spirit can visit him that night in his dream? The evidence of God's love has come to him. And when he shares that with you, wow, that's an open door for you to preach the gospel to me. And this is how we keep multiplying the blessing of the Lord all over the earth, all over the earth. And guess what? Everything is being taken care of. The church building will be taken care of. The, 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 your building, your house will be taken care of. Praise God. Everything God is, everybody's need is being met all over the earth. Both the good, the bad, the ugly, God is taking care of everyone because the church is up and doing. And you are the church.
it's time to repent and get serious of fulfilling the promise of God to Abraham. And we are the ones that God said he will fulfill that promise true. Father, we lift up our hearts to you. We connect with your truth. Release your blessing upon the earth. Remember your promise to Abraham. And Lord, we say yes. Fulfill it in us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.